What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I'm going to attempt to cover incomplete dominant and recessive genetics. So I'm going to first start off with the incomplete dominant. A lot of the times you'll hear this called incomplete dominant or co-dominant, and I'm going to tie it in later in the video to recessive genetics. I think in order to understand recessive genetics, it's a really simple concept, but to grasp it, it's easier to show visually with the incomplete dominant version of it. Incomplete dominant and recessive genetics are essentially the same thing, except the incomplete dominant shows a visual set. Uh, it shows visually, where the recessive genetics, you need two components to be, uh, you need a complete set of genetics, a complete set of those dominant genetics, in order to have a visual representation of the animal. So this is a question, again, I get asked this question probably more often than I should. There's all kinds of really good information. I'm not going to claim to be a genetic expert. I'm far from it. The terms I use may not be the correct terms, but I'm hoping that you guys can visually understand in your breeding in your breeding, breeding goals in the future, you guys will be able to understand what to pair and how it all interacts with each other. There's also some other things that, that, that go into some genetics markers like Motley uh, and Motley and Hypo and those things like that, that for boas that were is just a whole different subject. So just a simple broad spectrum overview of incomplete genetics. I'm gonna use a fire as an example animal. So this is, in my opinion, a really good representation of an incomplete dominant uh, set of genetics where a fire, we're gonna say, has half of the genetics of a complete set. So a normal animal, I'm gonna pull out a normal just to show you kind of a normal versus fire. So here's our normal. This is just your base morph, your, your simple everyday animal. And then here is your fire. So this animal is, uh, you can see the pattern's a little bit different. These are somewhat different localities, but pattern's a little bit different. And it's not so much the fire, but when you have a complete set of genetics. So this has a half set of, I'm gonna call the fire gene. I don't know if that's the correct term for it, but a half set of the fire gene. If you get that into a complete form, you'll make a leucistic animal. So this is very similar to like yellow belly ball python, uh, Mojave ball pythons. So here is your complete set of genetics. This is a super fire. So a complete set of fire genetics will give you a super fire. So put this girl back here. Uh, and, and where I'm going with this is, this is kind of your baseline animal. So if you breed a normal, to this animal or this animal to a normal half of the babies will get genetics like this the other half will be normals so i think that's a pretty simple concept to understand this this animal can only it gives, it gives a 50 50 split now if you get a full uh a full shown or full full blown set of genetics like this this fire or this super fire pull her back out for a minute the super fire here if you breed this to a normal animal, because it has a complete set, all of the animals, all of the babies will be fires. So this is the super form. You will not get more fires because the other animal doesn't have a set of genetics to complete this, but this has a full set. So when it gives, it, when it gives out the half set to every baby, it's gonna be just like this one. The only way to get a visual animal like this is to breed it back to another visual or to breed it back to the incomplete form, which is this fire. So if I breed, or to breed two incomplete sets together. So let me backtrack a little bit. The easiest way, again, I shouldn't say the easiest way, but how I'm gonna explain this is this animal to a normal will give you all fires. This fire to a normal will give you half fires, half normals. I think we're hopefully we're all on the same page at this point. If you breed, this is where it's gonna get a little bit more complex. If you breed this fire to this super fire, in theory, half of the animals will be leucistic. The other half of the animals will be fire. Similar how we said this animal to a normal will give you all fires. This animal to a normal will give you half fires, half normals. Because this will give half and this will give a complete set to everything, that in theory means that your litter will have all fires, and all and half leucistics. So they'll all either have a half set or a complete set of the genes that make these snakes up. Going a little bit more in, in depth on this, if you breed two of these animals together 
and I, sh I wish I had a board that I could write this on, but if you breed two fires together, so a fire to a fire, think about it simply if we have uh, uh, four snakes, half of the snakes from the male are going to get a complete set. The other half of the snakes from the female are going to get a complete set. So in theory, about 25% of those animals are going to be a complete super form. Another 25% of those animals are going to be uh, a, just a complete normal because only half from each snake is going to go. And then 50% of those animals are going to be a fire. So if I, I again, look up Punnett square, that, that's an easy way to, to represent this. But uh, again, I don't have anything to draw on. So hopefully, you know, that kind of gets you, gets you moving on this simple form of genetics. So again, if I breed two fires together, each animal is going to give a 50% split. So in theory, out of every four babies, you're going to get one fire, or I'm sorry, one super fire, two fires, and one normal. So getting a little bit even more complex, um, I guess, yeah, I guess that kind of covers it. Not really getting more complex, but uh, to get into recessive genetics, which work in a very, very similar fashion, uh, that's, that's, they think this is a good transition. So I just want to recap one more time. A fire to a normal, or a super fire to a normal, are going to give you all fires. A super fire to a fire are going to give you one super fire, two fires, and then one normal. A fire to a normal are going to give you half fires and half normals. So this works very similar to recessive genetics. So I'm going to put these guys back. I hope I don't regret that and want to pull them out again. Um, let's go into recessive genetics and albinism and things like that. So they work very, very similar to what we just discussed. The only difference is that half set of genetics doesn't show visually. It visually does not show through. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to pause the video and come right back with the leopard because that may be a good example. Um, so we'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So I'm back with the leopard boa. This is a good example of a recessive gene, but if you think about leopard, it kind of, maybe it could be considered an incomplete dominant, not to the purest form, but um, let's, let's talk back to what we just discussed. This leopard is a complete set, a visual uh, animal. This is like the super fire. This is like the leucistic boa. If I breed this snake to a normal snake, all of the babies are going to be het or heterozygous for the leopard gene. So that's very similar to me breeding the super fire to a normal animal. All of the animals are going to be, in theory, um, uh, uh, fires. So that's the same idea. The only difference between a leopard or some of these other recessive genes like an albino is that when you breed this leopard to a normal, all of the snakes are going to be het, but they're going to look exactly like normals because a recessive gene doesn't have a visual indicator. Um, again, maybe a leopard wasn't the best example. I probably should have pulled out an albino or a blood or something like that. But a leopard is going to be uh, that... Or, or, or all those babies are going to make heterozygous babies, hets, 100% hets. So similar to when we pulled out the fire. Now let's talk about what the 66% het means, 100% het, 50% het. These are the chances that the snake, that normal looking snake, is going to prove out to be a 100% a, uh, het animal. So back up one more time. If we take this animal, this visual leopard, and we breed it to a normal, all of the animals are going to be 100% heterozygous for a normal, meaning, or for a leopard, meaning that this animal here is going to pass half of its genetics down to the babies. Um, and in theory, you breed those two babies together and you should get more leopards. So that's where it comes into pretend those 100% hets are like the fires. They're the incomplete dominant. And if you breed two of those together, so I breed two 100% het babies together, in theory, I'll get, out of four babies, I'll get one visual, two 100% hets, and one uh, normal baby. And that's where the genetics come into 66% het. So there is a 100% chance, well, I shouldn't say that, but in theory, on Punnett squares, there's a 100% chance that some of those babies, let's say we have four babies, we have one visual and three normals, or three normal-looking babies, that 
two of those three normal looking babies are uh, het for leopard. And that's why they say there's a 66% chance because two out of the three will be het. So 66%, it's probably more like 67% or so, but or 66.6. .6. Either way, we're talking that that 66% babies, two of those are going to be the the visual fire, kind of that we'll call it. And then one of them is just going to be complete normal. Because you can't tell a difference from them, because there's no visual indicators like there is between a super fire and a fire and a normal baby, you have to consider all of them as potentials. Going further into this, let's go back and let's talk about 50% hats. So if I breed a 100% hat baby, that is similar to the fire, the non the non complete version of the leucistic. So it's just the fire baby. If I breed that to a normal, in theory, half of the babies are going to be fires, half of the babies are going to be normals, right? So if I breed that 100% hat to a normal, half of the babies are going to be 100% uh, hat for uh, for leopard, the other half of the babies are going to be um, normals. So that is why you come up with 50% het, because there's a 50% chance that any one of those babies I pick is going to be 100% het for the leopard gene or for any other recessive gene that we're talking about. Albino, albino is probably the most common. Um, leopard, there's still some indicators, and we'll go through the indicators in some other videos of uh, you know leopard, anery, albino, things like that. So. Hopefully this, this helped you a little bit. I think the recessive genes are difficult to understand at first, but when you consider, uh, when you pull into the, the fact that they're very similar to an incomplete dominant without a visual representation, that's kind of how, how you need to relate it. So hopefully this video helped you. I, I tried to put it in as straightforward terms as I can. It's really difficult to do this on camera and not have a whole bunch of animals to show you or walk around the room. Maybe if you guys have trouble still after this video, I'll just have to do a walk around of the room and show a couple different examples and talk about this again. But I think in order to really understand the recessive genetics, you have to understand how the incomplete dominant works. And that's a good way to understand um, overall how genetics in snakes work. There's some other things. There's dominant. That's like motley. Uh, there's no super form. It's either it's visual or it's not. Um, and we'll talk about that maybe later, but hopefully you guys can understand incomplete dominant and recessive genetics. I hope this video helped you guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Leave me some comments in the comment section below. Let me know if this was clear, if you want me to do another video on this, and how I can do that, no that next video that would help better explain this. So I appreciate you guys following, watching. Thank you as always. Please keep hitting the thumbs up and subscribing and talk to you guys soon.